got to be some preparation. And so many times, that's the way uh, we as church folk, we don't want to take no time to get prepared. We don't want to turn our plates down. We don't want to get in our prayer closet. We don't want to pray. We don't want to seek God's face. We just want to whine, 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 whine. Any of you done had any children that that's all you hear a bunch of just whining every time? Yeah. I don't have my own I done, shut up and sit down somewhere. Yeah, I don't have to do that. I'm sick of all that whining. I don't, that because that ain't making me do nothing that I'm gonna do. Whatever I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it. But the extra whining and crying, I don't want uh uh. That's how we get to God some sometimes. Now if, if if it's a sincere supplication and prayer, that's something different. But us always complaining and always telling God what's wrong. Don't you know God said if I can take care of the ladies of the field? They don't do nothing. I just see about them. I just make sure they look pretty. Every spring, they come up in all different colors. They, they say Solomon wasn't even arrayed. Couldn't even look as pretty as the lilies of the valley, the lilies of the field, these flowers. They just come up and manifest my glory. The birds just go forth and, and produce. And here it is, you down here complaining, crying and whining and worried, as if though you serve a lesser God, as if though you serve a God that ears are too heavy and he can't hear, or you serve a God that hands is too short that he can't reach out and see about your every need. I said, no, I'm an almighty God. No, I'm a God that's concerned about everything. And I thank God as I see the example here of Brother Isaac. The Bible declared that he obeyed God and he stood fast right there in that land and he leaned on the promises of God so much and so that God renewed his covenant with him just as he did with his father Abraham he said yeah Isaac just because you obeyed me I'm going to perform I'm going to do see Isaac had the uh, 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 the, the wherewithal, if he wanted to, he could have left and still went down to Egypt. But when God told him, no, Isaac, stand still. Stay right there. And a lot of times, that's what God is trying to get us to do. He's trying to get us to stand still. During this pandemic, in this past year, God said, I was trying to get you to stand still. I was trying to get you to trust me, to be your provider. You saw I had already covered you. You saw I had already protected you. Just realize how much I really care. How much I'm really concerned about them that loves me. And so... Here, as we see, God spoke to Brother Isaac to stand still. Well, his father before him had gone through a similar famine, and he allowed him to go down into Egypt. Then he told 
Isaac, you stand still. But then as we go a little further down and we can see Isaac's son, Jacob, God told Jacob that I need you to go down to Egypt. So we have to see that God tells each person how to do and what to do according to their several abilities. He knew that Isaac wasn't going to be able to deal with what Abraham could deal with. So he told Isaac, you stand still. But then a few years later, as he bought Jacob into being, he said, I'm going to need you now, Jacob, to go down into Egypt. Because if he hadn't have sent Jacob down into Egypt, he wouldn't have had a way of making a transfer of wealth. See, that's where the wealth of the Israelites came from all the wealth of Egypt that God transferred when he bought them out after 400 years of slavery and hard labor. So you can never, what I'm saying to you saints, you can never question God in the way he moves because he did it one way for this person. Well, why God didn't do it like that for me? You can't question God. Amen. Here it is, all three of these patriarchs dealt with famines. But each one of them, God had them to deal with their famine in a different way. And God's hand was moving in each one of them's situation in an individual way. So we have to understand that because God doesn't move the same way he moved for our uncle or the way he moved for our sister, our brother, or our daddy, or mama, doesn't mean that God isn't working our situation out. Tell your neighbor, say, God's still bringing you out. It was because of his obedience that God began to deal with Isaac. And the Bible says down in verse number 12 that Isaac sold. And that's important for us to recognize. Isaac sold in that same year. He didn't wait for the deluge to come. He didn't wait for things to get better. He didn't wait for them to create a vaccine. Uh, but the Bible declared that Isaac sold in the midst of the drought. Isaac sold when everybody else was looking at him saying, man, what in the world are you doing? Isaac sold when everybody else was sitting at home crying and whining and wondering and and trying to figure out what is we going to do. Isaac sold when it was hot outside. Before any clouds was in the sky to produce the rain, to, 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 to fertilize the seed. Isaac sold in the famine. And God is saying to somebody tonight, it's time to sow. It's time for you 
to stretch your faith. Amen. Come on and say, well, I, I don't have any, any money. Huh? You, you may not have no money, but what resources you do have? Stop sitting down on the stool or do nothing. Stop sitting down and all these pews is empty in the house of the Lord. God is saying, so, that means get up and go to work. Yeah, this is your year. This is our year for destiny, but we still got to work. When Coming everything up on the right. is gone haywire and uh, the stimulus checks is cutting short and, 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 and the money is looking funny and, and you don't have enough to meet your needs, so you know it must be a what? A seed. Good morning. Well, we would just love to invite you and give you an opportunity to sow into this powerful ministry God has blessed us with. All you have to do is log on to elvm.org. That's www.elvm.org and click on the give link to donate to this great ministry. Listen, I am so excited about what God is doing. This is our year for manifestation. And guess what? You can be a part of it too. But we would love for you to just Make a commitment now to, to donate to a ministry that's going places and doing things for the Lord. For your gift of just $10 or more, we'll be glad to send you one of your choice, either a DVD or a CD. So whatever it is, we would just like for you to make your request known, and we would love to sew back into you. We love you. God bless you. It wasn't how it played out with Jacob and his sons. Amen. God had everything laid out differently for them. All they had to do was go into the land of Egypt and because he had somebody there that had already prepared the way, they just picked up full bags of grain and took it back home. Same way it was with Abraham. Abraham, you don't hear about him having to sow nothing. God just prepared in the time of the drought, God prepared the, 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 the king to see about Abraham. But with Brother Isaac, I said, Isaac, I'm going to bless you, son, just like I promised that I would, but you got to work for it. And that's what so many of church folk fall short today. Oh, we would, we would, we would, we would if we didn't have to work for it. If we didn't have to put our hand to the plow and do just a little bit of work, Oh, it's like we're allergic to some work. Yeah. God said, no, I done prepared the way. I promise you, even in the midst of a drought, I'll provide. I'll open up a way for you. The Bible declared that even in the time of the drought, that God Bless Isaac 100 fold. Now, I, 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 had, to, I had to do some digging. <laughs> Pastor Yerba, to understand really what is this 100 fold? What is it that God is really saying? to his people that if you trust me during this season if you trust me when everything is gone haywire and uh, the stimulus checks is cutting short and, 
and, and, and, and the money is looking funny, and, and you don't have enough to meet your needs, so you know it must be a what? A seed. God, God, God is saying that if you just trust me in this season, if you would trust me in the hard time, this is what I was teaching you and bringing you into the understanding of the, under, the other Sunday when we were talking about vulnerability. If you'll trust me, if you'll sow into me when you're at your weakest point. Isn't that the way God worked with the, uh, uh, the widow there at Zarephath when when, when she got all the way down to the very last bit of meal in her meal barren, and the prophet said, all I want you to do now is just fix me some first. Ah, uh, I'm trying to show you a point here. I'm trying to show you how God will work when you get down to your very last dime, when you get down to the point that where there's no way out. He said, I'll do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can ask or even think. God said, I'm just waiting on you to show me that you'll trust me. I'm just waiting on you to show me that you still have faith. It doesn't matter what the people say is going on with the economy. God say, I still hold the world in the palm of my hand. God say, I still own the cattle on a thousand hills. God say the earth is mine and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He say the silver is mine. He say the gold is mine. Whatever you need, yeah, whatever you need, God say I got it. I got it in my hand. I got it if you seek me. I got it if you trust me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I can see. <laughs> I can see Brother Isaac. There he is, sowing in a barren land. I can see Brother Isaac sowing and dust balls all around his feet. Yes, I can see Brother Isaac still sowing when everybody around him, laughing at him, calling him everything but a child of God, I can still see Brother Isaac putting one grain after the other grain, after the other grain, after the other grain. In a dry land, he was still sowing. <laughs> Good God Almighty, God told me to encourage you and let you know that he is the Lord of the harvest. Great! He is where all your blessings flow. He is where your increase comes from. Say yeah! Say yeah! Yeah, 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 and I can see way after a 
Ah, the king of the Philistines began to look at brother Isaac. And he said, this fool out here thinking he finna come up. And we all know that this is not the season to be trying to plant. This is the season to sit down and ration out the little bit that you already got. But I can hear my Bible saying that faith without works is dead. And it's abiding alone. But any time that you got Christ and you add a little Jesus with your seed, with your sowing, then there is a supernatural. There is a supernatural outcome. There is a supernatural income that comes with your release, the release of your faith. See, Isaac was just like his daddy. The Bible declared that Abraham was the father of the faith. And he learned something from his daddy. Even though he didn't go down to Egypt, he said, I remember daddy. He said that, God, I'm going to trust you. I may not be able to see you, but I heard a voice say, leave out of this land and go into a land that I'm going to show you. And here go brother Abraham picking up his grip, grabbing his family, grabbing his children, and obeying the voice of God. And I can still see Isaac obeying God's voice, just like his daddy. And way after a while, the Bible declared that in that same year, he received 100 fold. Good God Almighty. I say, Lord, help me with the 100 fold. He said that when uh, uh, Isaac sold his seed, whereas every seed should have produced one stalk. I'm talking about supernatural increase. Every seed was supposed to produce one stalk of grain. But in the supernatural, the Bible declared that it was a hundred fold. God said, so what happened was, he said, I blew on that seed. And where one seed was supposed to produce one stalk, one seed produced a hundred stalks. I should go home right now. Because if you don't get that blessing, if God bless you a hundred dollars for every dollar that you gave, what, what more could you ask for? The stock market can't give you that kind of return. God say for every one, I'll give you a hundred. Well, it's prayer time again, and I am now petitioning for those of you that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sin. Well, there's no greater time than the present. 
All you have to do is just accept in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life and he is ready and willing to come in. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will, let me in. I'll come in and I'll sup with him. In other words, Jesus is ready and he's willing to come in and to be a part of your life if you're willing to let him do so. Well, it's just as easy as repeating a few words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I ask you now to forgive me for all of my sins. I'm sorry for whatever is done I've done in my life that's against your will and against your word. And I repent and I ask you now to forgive me. Come into my life. Make me a new creature. Well, if you can believe what you just said, then it's already done. Now, what your responsibility is, is to join a Bible-based church that will teach you how to grow and to become the warrior and the winner that Christ is meant for you to be. God bless you. I invite you to come right here to the First Albany Deliverance Cathedral on 1506 South Slappy Boulevard in the good life city of Albany, Georgia, where we are discipling winners. We're training men and women how to become winners. So listen, we're glad to have you here if you would like to. We have church services each Sunday at 1030, and we'll be looking forward to see you here. God bless you now. Look to see you. We love you. Thank you for tuning into Ladder Rain. We hope you have enjoyed the word this morning. To order a copy of this message in its entirety, please visit our online store at www.efvm.org or call 229-436-7707. To partner with us on our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, please make a donation by clicking the Give link on our website or through the Givelify app. You've got questions, we've got answers. Join us Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for our life enrichment classes. Each week, we will tackle various thought-provoking topics to equip you with the tools you need to transform your life. Visit us online or give us a call to find out this month's topic and more information. Once again, we thank you for tuning into Ladder Rain. Join us next week as we experience the outpour, the overflow, the latter rain.